This is Startup Storefront. Swing Vision started as an app that leveraged the Apple Watch to help tennis players improve their game. Players could now track their swing movements, hits, and scores. But after working at Tesla, Swapno, the co-founder of Swing Vision, realized there was a lot more they can do with this simple idea. By mounting an iPhone on a court and through motion tracking within the app, they can now offer automated scoring, line calling, recorded match highlights, and so much more. In this episode, we talked about the impact of having Swing Vision featured on the Apple Keynote, coaching players with AI, and last, between you and me, we also talked about Diego paying a little extra to have the speed of his serves register faster than they actually are. All right, welcome to the podcast. On today's show, we're talking to Swepnil, founder of Swing Vision. Thanks for coming. Welcome. Yeah. Yeah, thank you for having me. For people who don't know, what does your company do? What are you working on? Well, um, we've built essentially a mobile app that provides automated stats and officiating using just your iPhone. That's pretty Mm -hmm. much what it comes down to. I'm a user of the product and a big (laughs) tennis fan. You're a big tennis fan, I imagine. You play a lot. Oh, for sure. That's yeah. my main sport. Yeah. And I follow it, uh, the professional tour as well, pretty closely. Why I wanted to have you on was two reasons. One, I used to be in tech a long time ago at a bow tie company, right? And we launched an app and it was like this try before you buy feature. Mm-hmm. And at the time, an iPhone screen was the size of a bow tie. And so yeah. that's why we, it was a bow tie company. And we would just let people like put the phone up to their neck in the mirror. And it was like this high res image, even though the camera was 3.2 megapixels, it was like a high res yeah. image. The concept was try before you buy, and it was cool. And then we got all this press around like fashion meets tech. And then all of a sudden, we thought of ourselves as an app company, yeah. and then we ended up becoming a bow tie company. That's how it happened because we had, people were like, "Oh, cool, what a cool way to get a bow tie." And so, in your journey, it's almost it's similar, I would imagine, where it's like you have this, you're like your your background obviously is in tech, yeah. and so it's like, okay, what is the technology that we're creating, and then how can we apply it to something? At the very beginning of it, what what was that like for you? What path were you going down around, like, here's the tech? Well, it was interesting for us, actually. There's just a problem we were trying to solve, which was, for me, fundamentally, I just wanted data on my game. That was, like, the simplest thing. Like, I just, I play a tennis match, I lose. I want to know why I lost. What do I need to work on for next time? That was, like, the fundamental problem. And so it was interesting because we didn't really know, like, what tech we could use to solve that. So initially, when I first started working on this, I was in grad school out in New York, and uh, the Apple Watch had just come out. So like my initial idea was like, oh, I have this like computer on my wrist now. Maybe I could get some data from that. And so the initial version of the product was actually just an app for the Apple Watch. So it didn't really do anything with your phone. But we would use the sensors in the watch to like analyze your swing. So you could tell you like how fast you're hitting, what type of shots are you hitting. Am I hitting like more forehands versus backhands, things like that. And then we also added like the ability to keep score manually. So you could like use the touch screen to like input the score. But over time... What we found was like people wanted things to be automated. They don't want to have to like manually input right, the scores. Totally, yeah. And so over time we realized, okay, so this is still the problem we want to solve, but we actually need to evolve the technology to make it like more automated. And how can we do that? Well, you can't really do that with a watch. You have to use the phone, you have to use the camera. Yeah. And so then it switched into computer vision as a solution, basically. So it's interesting, like we weren't super like hinged on any particular technology. We were just stuck on this problem that we wanted to solve. We tried to solve it with this other this initial technology, which is like pretty good, but still kind of rudimentary compared to what we ended up making, which is a lot more impressive. So, what does the camera unlock from a tech perspective versus like the Apple Watch? Yeah, so with the camera, the thing is, well, first of all, you can see all the players, right? So with the watch, like okay. I can only see you. Yeah. And then with the watch, you're also restricted to just your swing motion. With the camera, I can see the entire trajectory of the ball. How are the players moving on the court? What's actually happening in the entire scene? And then that lets you do things like line calling, which is like the most popular feature now um, in the app. Uh, so, you know, it just opens up a lot more things. You can just do, you have strictly more information if you think about it. And so you can just like track more data and you can just provide more benefits to the customer. And how long were you guys like building this out or tr- at least like maybe in beta or at least <laughs> getting to the point of like, okay, can we take this to market? Yeah. Well, so the initial watch app we were probably working on for like a year while I was still in grad school, just like a side project. And then we finally released it. And it was still just like a hobby on the side. It wasn't anything that we did full time. So my co-founder Richard and I were just working on it. And then later on, after I finished grad school, I worked at Tesla. I was there full time. Okay. So I still wasn't doing this full time yet. What were you doing at Tesla? Um, and at Tesla, I was working on their autonomous driving team, Autopilot. Okay. Got it. So that's where I started to get more, I guess, experienced in computer vision. Yeah. And I was specifically working on object tracking. And so that's when things started to click for me. I was like, oh, I could use some of this to track like the tennis ball yeah. with an iPhone camera. And so that's when we decided to switch to using computer vision. And so that took us about six months to make the first version. So I left Tesla. My co-founder left his company. We started working on Swing Vision full-time. This is like summer of 2019, so three years ago. 
And then within six months, we built a kind of working version. And at that point, we had enough experience that we knew, like, we just need to release it right away. We're not going to wait to perfect this. Yeah, smart. It just needs to just go, go out the door. Yeah, break it. And so we just released it at the end of 2019, right before the pandemic hit. But it was right to release it early. Yeah. Uh, because that helped us get, like, a lot more feedback and data. And, and this is, yeah. did you guys, at this point, you're not, you're not looking for funding, right? Um, we did get some it, funding. Get some? Okay. Yeah, we got some funding. It was mostly friends and family. Actually, my, my neighbor ended up investing a little bit. And then that's nice. also when you got Andy Roddick and James Blake to invest. So yeah. they invested in that initial kind of angel friends and family round. How did you meet them? Um, what was the connection there? Yeah, that was pretty cool. So uh, a friend of mine from high school played professional. So he ended up going pro. He was ranked as high as like 600 in the world. Um, so, you know, did decently well. And his physio knew James through like another company that they worked on together. Okay. It's called Cramps Away, like takes away your cramps in like 60 seconds or something. Oh, interesting. So, yeah, it's okay. pretty interesting. So it's like, it's like Stan Wawrinka actually used this when he beat Novak Djokovic in the US Open final in like 2015. He was like cramping up and he used this solution. So anyways, a physio. I, I want to know. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. I want to know more about, about potassium at a later time. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, it's yeah, weird. It like, I, it's, it's, I'm very skeptical that it works, but like apparently people have used it and it works. Hey, so That's a good story. You know, know. Yes, if Stan wins. Uh, yeah. yeah, if Stan wins, <laughs> right. like that's the best endorsement. That's great there, marketing. Right? So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so so this guy's physio was the doctor at Kaiser in like NorCal who made the solution. He like came up with the whole thing. And then James was an active endorser of the product because after retirement, he started doing like marathons and he was cramping up. And so he found a need for the product and he's like, wow, this works. I'm going to start endorsing it. So that was a connection there. And the physio was also an active user of our watch app at the time. Okay. So that was the connection. Fan, loyalist, friend. Exactly. So it all worked out. So he's like, okay, I'll make the intro to James. Cause I was like, I'm trying to get like somebody in the tennis space to like back us. Yeah. So I went to San Diego, pitched James. I, at the time I was at Tesla still, and I told him this was my vision, which was like, we've been trying to solve this problem for a long time. Now we know what the solution is. It's using the iPhone camera. Mm-hmm. And he just loved it right away. And he was really impressed because he felt like even the pros could use this, which was, I was surprised because if That's you're a professional player, yeah. as you probably know, like you have Hawkeye, you have all this amazing technology totally. in the matches. So like, why would you need this? But he right. was saying it's because once you're off that stadium and you're right. practicing right. all around the world, you don't have you any don't technology, have you have yeah. no data. And that blew my mind. I was like, oh, that's a good point. Like, you actually probably don't have that data. Especially just, something um, so portable that you can carry with you no matter where you are in the world. Exactly. Or like one of your coaches could easily, yeah. Yeah. Sure, <laughs> yeah. And your coach doesn't even your have to be there. there right? yeah. yeah, exactly. So like your coach could just like literally bring their iPhone, just set it up and like record your practice session. And like, you'd get all the same data you get in your match. And so that blew my mind. So he was like really sold on it from that perspective. Uh, so he ended up investing and then he invited me out to like this exhibition match that he was playing in Texas. And he's like, Hey, Andy Roddick's going to be there. John McEnroe's going to be there. Jim Career's going to be there. You can meet all these guys and maybe try to convince one of them to also invest. Uh, so I went out there with him there. I got to meet all of them, basically like pitched the, the whole idea and everything. Um, and then Andy was the one who was the most interested. And so he was the one who ended up investing as well. So when you yeah. roll this out, what's your strategy there aside from just like making it public on the app store, you know, are you going to local tennis clubs, uh, events, tournaments? Like what, what's that like for you guys? Yeah, that was something that we started doing more recently. I would say like, I think initially when we launched the idea was like, let's just put on the app store and let's maybe try to get featured on the app store. Cause we'd been featured once before for the watch app. How do you do that? To Um, get featured? Would you (laughs) like, is it super random or is there like someone, you know, Um, in a department and they're just, you're just like, take a special look at this. Yeah. It's a bit of both. So the first time we ever got featured was actually for the Apple watch series four. So um, when the Series 4 was announced, if you went on the actual website of Apple's like Series 4 page, uh, somewhere along the screen, if you scroll down, it would show you like great third-party apps. And so it showed like the Nike running app yeah, and, and like you... a surfing app and then Swing Vision. Okay. And was that huge? Like, did that really materialize? That was downloads? pretty big for us. Yeah. And so it was, you, saw the, you saw a massive um, bump. There was, okay. a, there was a big bump when the Series 4 came out for us. We okay. got like a lot of traction, which helped with like, all these conversations with James and Andy. This all happened like at the sure, same time, which sure. was great. But... You know, ultimately, it wasn't like that big of a spike. I knew that we had to move to like a different model. But yeah. it, what was nice was it established a credibility with Apple that like yeah. now they know us. There's like multiple people there who know about us on their PR team, on their marketing team, on their right. editorial team. They're paying attention. And they're paying attention. Yeah. And so at that after that point, I could just reach out to those same people and be like, hey, we're working on this new thing. It's going to use computer vision. It's going to use your iPhone. It's going to be amazing. And so we could kind of feed them sort of like this is what we're going to work on. Now, at that point, it's up to them. Like I've give, I've done what I can. But, you know, at least we have put our name out there. And then we always focus on just having like really good design in the app, just like great usability, like, you know, make the app as if like Apple made it, just make it feel like user-friendly, easy to use. And so that's what we always focused on. And so there's like tons of tennis tracking apps out there, but I think we have the best interface by far. And so, you know, all those things like help 
you get noticed. So, you know, a so little bit of luck. Class. But yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when you do launch the app, yeah. you get featured. Some investors, they don't want to be public in any capacity, right? right. Like, yeah, like, that's a good and point. so is Andy very much like, because I see him talking about it. You yeah. Know, he'll, he'll go on shows and he'll talk about it. Yeah. Obviously, he's active on social media to some extent, too. And so he's, sure. he seems more than happy to be a fan yeah. and an investor. Yep. But that's sometimes not always the case. And so do you ask him? Do you push them? James or yeah. Andy. It was like, interesting. Like, do you ask for a, are you like, please like do yourself a solid, you know what I'm saying? Cause yeah, yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. help me help you. Exactly. No, it's, it's actually really easy with them. I'm just like, I, I try to be conscious of their time because at the end of the day, they're just investors. Like they don't have like a ton of equity in the company or anything. So like, I'm not going to treat them like an employee. So I just, you know, let them know like, Hey, we had this opportunity coming up. It is a way for you to get involved. If you could give us some of your time, it'd be awesome. I never like tried to pressure them or anything. And then in the early days when we first launched it, we knew the app was like really suboptimal and like not working that well. And so we didn't really ask them for anything actually at all. Like we didn't want their name to be attached to the product until it had like some traction. So we kind of kept it on the wraps. We didn't tell anybody for at least a year that they were actually involved. And then once it started to do a lot better, we started to get good reviews from customers, good retention, things like that. Then I was like, okay, this is actually becoming real. It's doing well. Now you guys can start promoting it. Like, I think I feel comfortable having you guys attach your name to it. Yeah. I feel the confidence it's going to actually work out for everybody here. So, you know, that's kind of how we did it. And I think they were appreciative of that too. They didn't totally, want to just yeah. put their name on anything, right? So, yeah, they want to know um, it works well. Yeah. yeah, they want to know it works well and they're just not, you know, because ultimately like they're not that familiar with the app themselves, right? They just like the concept, they've invested in it. So they're kind of trusting us to like yeah. make the make the call at the right time. So. And then, so when you launch, you're a little pre-COVID and then COVID hits. <laughs> and then yeah. from what we see, everyone's saying like tennis skyrocketed in, well, in terms of playership and as yes. a sport in general. Did you see that also? Yes, but initially it was pretty terrifying because in March, initially, uh, March 2020, all the courts closed. So everything was right. locked down because we were just like, we don't know what we're going to do. Yeah, right? the, yeah. whole, the whole world was just like confused. The ball had COVID. You couldn't, yeah, the ball the had ball. COVID. Yeah, like, you, you couldn't the, touch the my ball without yeah, yeah. writing yeah. Some, my name on it. Right. Dude, exactly. I was reading right. like, this is the dumbest shit on yeah, like, earth. Mine's pen two years, pen three. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, I was just yeah. thinking about the other day. I was like, this is so silly. We also um, had like this <laughs> MIT professor come on that was studying COVID and, and he's like, it's an airborne illness. <laughs> right. It, it doesn't live on surfaces. This is crazy. Yeah. And so, you know, we felt like we were like conspiracy theorists because we, we was like, we, <laughs> this we guy actually, told us yeah. all the science. Right, right, right. right. And and like, yes, the, yes, it the exists. C, the CDC it's real. And the but, news was like, <laughs> right. Still, you know, yeah. like people, were, hazmat people were bleaching them. Like, think about think about the fact that some <laughs> yeah. humans were out there yeah, spraying yeah. each other with bleach before they went in their homes. Yeah. Terrified I mean, to kill each other. <laughs> yeah, I guess everybody has different risk tolerances, but yeah, especially when you, there's not much information. So um, March, yeah, the courts are yeah, closed. Yeah, so all the courts like, closed. So that was scary for us because the user base went to zero. And so then we're like, oh my God, what are we supposed to do now? Like, when are we going to open up again? We actually like did a little bit of a pivot and started making some drills in the app that you could do at home. Oh, so you could like nice. put your phone on the ground and like swing the ball in the air there's these like targets that appear on the screen or you could hit against the wall and like it would count your shots and stuff so we actually started to work on that for a little bit and that did fairly well but then as you just mentioned like by the time it was like summer things started opening up again and then it was like everybody was playing tennis because that was like the safest thing to play and so then then we started to see a big big growth but really for us it was like September of that year when the, then the iPhone came out that year that was probably iPhone 11 I guess we got featured in the keynote. That was our first time getting featured in a keynote. Huge. And that's where like we started to see a big lift. Did you know beforehand? Um, like, are they asking for content? They won't tell you why, but I'm, I'm assuming they're asking for materials. In this case, we didn't know beforehand what it was for. All we knew, because also it was weird because they featured us in the iPad section, not the iPhone section. I guess they also released like a low cost iPad at that the same weird. event. Yeah. So that's why we had no idea. I was like, there's no iPads released in September. Maybe it looks usually. better. It's a bigger screen. Um, but interesting. Okay. And so they were just like, we're trying to film some content. Like we want to add some, can you guys add some things into this build of the app? And we're like, sure. And we had no idea what they were going to do with it. And then we just saw in the keynote, we were just like all going crazy. We're like, what is, what is happening right now? Like we're all in the keynote. Um, and so they, they don't invite you either. No, <laughs> you unfortunately. Just not, well, you, this was also pandemic time, right? right. So it was so all like all pre-recorded. All in the air. Uh, yeah, that was a little bit sad because like it, maybe yeah. in a normal time, I would be there on stage or something. For sure. So we missed out on that. You and Drake and yeah. Tim Cook. <laughs> Did they at least tell you to like tune in? Like, hey, you might want to watch this. <laughs> <laughs> no, they don't even tell that because they don't want to give any hints. I, I know, know they're so very, so. very secretive. Yeah, like, so that NDAs one, they were everywhere. Exactly. They were super secretive. So last year's was different. Last year, the iPad keynote and the iPhone keynote, we were a lot more involved in that one because I we had to go there to make sure like they were filming it correctly and I actually like, spoke in as part of the keynote. So that that was like, I kind of knew. But but even there, they didn't confirm anything. They're like, well, we might keep you. We might cut it. We don't know. Yeah. 
And it's like, you don't know to the last second. Like, they still don't confirm until you, like, watch it. Because they kind of want it to be a surprise. So from being featured, what is that spike like? I mean, that spike is, you know, it's like a, maybe on the initial keynote itself, it's maybe like a 10x uh, bump in, like, daily downloads. And then it kind of sustains for a bit for, like, maybe a week or so. Then it starts to, like, come down a little bit. But it's still, you can see that it's, like, a little bit higher than it was. The ba Your baseline has changed now a little bit. Yeah. And that maybe lasts like a quarter, I would say. But that's okay. a significant amount of time. Yeah, and the exposure um, is huge. Yeah, the exposure is huge. And then great our, time to raise capital. Great time to raise capital. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So you know, all of that works out nicely. Yeah, off the back of that, then we raised like another round at the beginning of the following year and all this stuff. So okay, uh, it, it, that was really helpful. Actually. Like a seed round, a proper um, seed round at that yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, we did a seed round. This was like last summer, so that was we raised about two million dollars. Okay, so it wasn't like a super big round. Yeah, but. smart. Earlier, you mentioned you're looking to raise a Series A, right? Is that coming up? Yeah, or that's is that coming up for us. Okay. We're still trying to figure out with the market and everything right now. I know sure. there's like a lot of investors are just kind of sitting it out, waiting to see what happens. But I mean, we feel like we have, we have kind of the traction to do it today if we wanted to. I think we're just trying to figure out what's the right time and to, you know, it's, it's going to suck up a lot of my time, obviously, to go fundraise, right? So I just want to make sure I'm spending my time wisely. But we have good runways. We don't need to do it anytime soon. But I think we're thinking in the next like six months or so. And I imagine uh, it's mostly yeah. tech, right? Mostly tech company or VCs. Yeah, it's going to be kind of your your classical VCs that are mostly yeah. based in Silicon Valley. There's there's some like uh, sports focused ones which are pretty cool, like sports tech focused okay. as well. Um, so okay. we're we're looking into some of those too. But we'll see. You know, kind of market will deem what happens, I guess. Yeah, dude. But, the way I look at this recession is like, yeah, you know, we'll hit pause on on some investments, but it's more of like we're just going to take a harder look. Yeah, I think that's what it that's is. That's really all. But if you're, which is fine for us, because I think our economics are great. Like totally, yeah. You've done a really good job with our like CAC and everything, and we just made sure we're growing responsibly yeah. we're not just like burning cash for the sake of burning cash and like growing as fast as you can how did you decide so, on your subscription price and so for <laughs> people listening you know you there's uh, an yeah. offering it's a monthly offering yeah i think it's like 120 bucks 150 bucks a year something like yeah. that and That's i right. always wonder on how, how do these apps <laughs> calculate what someone's willing to like is it a best I, I remember i met the mix panel ceo this is a long time ago uh -huh. and he's like i started at a, at a dollar and then i went up until someone said no yeah i was like oh Thank you. That's that's funny. Legendary. <laughs> you know, it's like okay, that's too simple. But when it comes to apps, it's hard, yeah, right? It's hard. It's like it's a different market. There's tennis people. Yeah. Some could argue they have money, but how much? It's more expensive than Netflix. Like I don't even know how you like. What's it was the really hard for us because, I mean, I feel like what we've built is so different from anything else before. Like this isn't just like Airbnb for something else. Or something. Like I can't <laughs> I can't describe my app that way, right? Totally, so yeah. I had nothing to compare it to. So what we did initially was we just sent out a survey. Um, right around the time that we were going to launch the first version of the video analysis product. And we asked people, like, if we built an app that could do these things, like, how much would you pay per month? And so the, the answers range across the board, but we typically saw, like, 10 to $20. And we were like, oh, that's pretty good because, like, people pay, like, 10 bucks for Netflix. I guess now Netflix is, like, 20 bucks. Yeah. Right? But back then, it was, yeah, like, yeah. 10 bucks or whatever. Yeah. So we were like, okay, that seems reasonable. So initially, we started at, like, 120 a year. That's roughly 10 bucks a month. And then as we started to make more improvements, it got like a lot more accurate. We introduced the line calling. We're like, okay, we're providing like a lot of value here. I think we should increase our prices. And we asked our customers again, we did some surveys. If we added like automated line calling, if we like automatically kept score for you, like how, what would this be worth to you? And then the answers started to go up. They're like, oh, I'd pay like 20, 30 bucks a month for that. So I was like, okay, that's interesting. So then we said, okay, maybe we should plan for something that's gonna be around 25 bucks a month, but we'll give you a steep discount if you get annual. So it should be cheaper. So we said, let's do 150 for annual now instead of 120. So we did an increase last year in April from 120 to 150. And then we've kind of kept it that way since then. So now we have annual plan 150. We have also now introduced a monthly plan because a lot of people ask for an actual monthly plan. So we have introduced a $25 a month monthly plan, but most people do the annual. It's like 95% do the annual. Are you seeing like in the data is the hard part getting people to come back? It's like, so there's this thing of like, a, what you're really doing is helping people improve, right? Right. But at the end of the day, not everyone wants to improve every day. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, right, the, right Mentally, right. they don't want to lock in. That's and right. And so that's what, right. <laughs> is the hard part of like, all right, Chad used it for January. Right, right. And in February, he's like, fuck this. Like, he just doesn't <laughs> use it anymore. Are you seeing anything? And then they come back. Like the, the pattern really. of human improvement. Yeah. Right? Well, it's been interesting. We built it with that in mind, which was like, I want to improve my game, right? Mm -hmm. But a lot of people now are just using it for the purposes of like entertainment. Like they just love seeing highlights of their match. Yeah. Like that, oh. And they just want to share that with their friends. It's so true. And once you get into that, you want winner. to do that every time. Yeah. Like you, yeah. if you play a match and you like forget your card, like, oh, I missed all those shots that I hit today. I wish I had that highlight reel right now. Right. So I think then it starts <laughs> to get a lot more sticky. That's and true. so what we're finding is the biggest hurdle is actually just convincing someone to do that first recording because you do need some equipment. You have to like buy like a stand or something to like mount your phone. 
But once people record, what we're finding is the retention is really good after that. So once you get them to record like one or two times, then they're like sold and they're recording constantly because of the highlights, the stats. I mean, improvement's obviously still a big part of it too. What about battery? Is that another hard challenge that you're dealing with where it's like, if, yeah, if, if it's a two hour so match, long. right? It's yeah. a two hour video to some extent yeah. where the camera is really paying attention and so it drains it. Yeah, it does drain it quite a bit. You know, we recommend people like charge fully. What's pretty cool is in the latest iOS that came out last year, you can now set it up so that your phone will automatically turn on low power mode when you're using Swing Vision. So that's really helpful because low power mode actually increases the battery another like 50% or something over what you would normally get. So now you can comfortably record like two, two and a half hours, no problem on like the latest like 11, 12, 13. Yeah, so that's it's been become less of a problem. And that's something where we think of the future. We're like five years from now, this just becomes less less of a problem, right? As battery yeah. technology improves. I mean, yeah. do you ever think about it like, in, I mean, obviously this is probably not important but it's like integrating this like share on social feature where it's like an immediate tiktok with a song yes and it's like a winner like you hitting a winner boom we have thought about that Put and uh, we do want to go into that area and one thing that's also cool is just making gifts of like totally yeah. your oh, yeah. winner forehand like, winner or whatever right and yeah. just share that send that to all your friends or your friend who just beat you know so yeah. almost like video gaming it right it's almost like like yeah. the highlight but it's you and that's cool exactly so that's a big Thing for us is just making content easier faster to share we're gonna be doing a lot of that next year and then speaking of video games like a big area for us now is also gonna be live streaming and we want to make this eventually almost like a twitch where like you could stream your game you could be like providing yeah. commentary in between the points and things like that so so like if andy roddick is playing you know a practice round or whatever exactly. he can he can like hit a shot and then turn to the camera and exactly. explain it okay yeah so that'd be kind of at fun. our club they, yeah. they live stream the tournaments and so this would be the, the move. Nice. Yeah. yeah. All of these entrepreneurs that come on the podcast are looking for a competitive edge. That's why we partnered with Athletic Greens. I ditched my vitamin C packets I was previously drinking in the morning and I've never felt better. It's noticeably given me more energy and an optimized immune system. This is not my first go around with multivitamins. I used to take these capsules and they made me feel bloated and disgusting and I stopped taking them after about two weeks. When I tried AG1, none of that happened. I felt good. I felt all of the benefits with none of the negative side effects. I'm a big believer in this over capsules. It completely replaced my multivitamins. Whether you're on the tennis court or in business, you need to win. Put AG1 into your lifestyle. It's great for recovery, clarity, and alertness. You're going to start hitting winners both in business and on the tennis court. Let's go. For less than $3 a day, you can reclaim your health with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop in a cup of water. That's it. No need for a million different pills or supplements. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash STS. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash STS to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. I want to dive into the, the usability of the app a little bit more. So you as a tennis player, yeah. you you have this app and you, you get all this data about your game and everything. We had Brad Gilbert on the podcast yeah. and his whole thing is like, know your opponent and exploit their weaknesses. Yes. So if, if I'm playing a match against Diego yes. and afterwards I want to dissect not only my footage, but mm -hmm. like, can I use the app to dissect what he's doing? So the next yes. time we play each other, I can, you know, find some advantage I can get a hold of. <laughs> 100%. So we literally were just doing user interviews last week, and this was like the most common thing people told us, which is like they actually use Swing Vision to look at their opponents. So I'm glad that they're doing that. It looks like they're listening to Brad Gilbert. Um, but basically, yeah, you can, it's so cool. Like you can go into the app and say like, show me all of like Diego's forehands that he missed or like all of his serves that he missed. And like, I can easily see that instantly. And so I can look at like what patterns is he struggling with. And so then I can like figure out like, okay, that's how I got to play him. And something that we're going to release later this year, which is going to be super cool, is it'll actually show you a playbook of where you should serve and then where you should hit the next shot after your serve to maximize your chance of winning the point against this particular person. So it's going to be like personalized God gameplay. Damn it. <laughs> uh, and so like at this point, once this comes out, like if you're not using Swing Vision, you're going to be losing a lot of matches because like everyone yeah. else is going to know what's, what's up. Right. Um, it's crazy, but On it's USTA so cool. USTA matches, they started it, <laughs> like a doubles USTA matches now. Like mm -hmm. the guys will be like, oh, do you mind if we record? Oh, that's so awesome. So I've started to see it being used that's like cool. in, in real play. Yeah. Would you ever be able to upload? So let's say Diego and I have never played each other. Sure. Yeah. But I want to upload some you footage some, of him oh. so that when we play, I'll be <laughs> oh, able to. Is, is for $100 that, a so month. Funny. Yeah. yeah. The I next mean, question is, what would you pay for that? Right. Yeah, <laughs> right. That's right. Well, yeah. that's funny. We do have the ability to upload because people typically will like, sometimes they'll record with like their GoPro or like their Android phone because we're iOS only right now. Yeah. 
uh, and it'll upload the footage. So technically, you can already do that, but I hadn't thought of anybody doing it in that way. That's pretty funny. Yeah. I could go look up his like YouTube videos or something and like find his old matches. I mean, now at this point, like there's so many more people using it, you can just find them in the app. Sure. And just go to their profile. Okay. And then you can like see their see their videos and stuff. So there is um, a, a big social aspect to it. Yeah, it hasn't okay. been fully. I feel like fleshed out, but it's there. Like yeah. you can use it for that purpose if you want to, and you Has can your scout game people. improved dramatically since you started the company to where you are today <laughs> i do feel like i'm playing a lot better than i did back like when we started the company and then i just feel like i can improve faster like yeah. i feel like every match i play there's like something different that i did wrong but i can just find that out faster now I've, i think i feel like i've solved that problem i had back in the day which was like what am i doing wrong because when you're playing a match you can kind of feel it's like oh my surge is off today or my forehand's off today i don't know what's wrong but something is wrong yeah. If you go back, look at the video, it's like so obvious. And so you can say like, show me all my serves that I missed. And it's like, ah, that's why. That's been really helpful to understand like, okay, I need to just be like turning my body a little bit more or like my toss was a little bit off or, you know, it's like little things. But yeah, I think the apps helped me with that. What I would love is eventually the app could just tell me what I did. What level you know? Yeah, that's true. Because right now I'm figuring it out myself. But if I was maybe like a more beginner player, I wouldn't really know like how to diagnose. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think that's like the next thing for coaching, us is like some sort of yeah, yeah have the AI actually provide the coaching. I think turn be, your body. At the end of the day, it's a it's a complex game, but there's only so many adjustments you can make. Right. So it's like you know I think we could automate a lot of that eventually. When I ran sales teams, I would film them, mm -hmm. and so this whole thing of like, it's weird to tell someone <laughs> that <laughs> like because no one believes that they're not like if you were yeah. awkward in the meeting, you don't believe it. You're like, what are you talking about? Because uh, everyone's so in their own, they're sure. so in their head, you know? You have they're a different so like this. Uh, memory of what happened, basically. Yeah. yeah, like it's like you never asked the client for X, Y, Z. They're like, yeah, I did. You know? And so then, <laughs> and so like, I would just train people and I would video. The first two weeks uh, was all video. That's so funny. And I'm like, you see, you do this nerd, you do this weird twitch. Why do you do that thing? Yeah. And then like, before you say something, you do this. And it's like, you're in the client's face for no reason. Like, why are you doing that? Right. And like, you're sweating here. Why are you like, you're awkward. Why are you sweating? And the whole thing is nobody enjoys it. Yeah. Like every salesperson I ever had, they hated yes. it. Yeah. But then by like the end of week two, they were so much better yeah. and the camera was gone and they knew they got, I mean, it was it, instant feedback. Yeah. And so when I saw swing vision, that's what I thought immediately. I was like, yeah. Oh, this is like, you're recording people's performances mm -hmm. and now you don't have a scapegoat. Like, cause in my head, I, I feel like I'm hitting the ball like Nadal. And then I watch myself <laughs> on the video and I'm like, well, who is that rookie? Like, what is that person doing? And so the, the feedback yeah, of yeah. it really helps performance in general, in anything, right? Recording yourself, yeah. even on this podcast. For sure. It's like, you're like, oh, I, I, what am I doing with my hands? Right. It's awkward. And then you, and then you <laughs> yeah. figure out and you move on. That's what I like about the app. That's, That's my biggest thing. I mean, yeah, you summarized that so well. That's exactly what like coaches love the most because they run into the same issue. They'll, totally, yeah. They'll do a lesson or, or their student will play a match and they're like, you weren't doing this, this, and this. And they're like, yeah, I was. And like, let's look at the video. You're yeah. not doing it. And like, oh, okay. Yeah. So it's exactly what, as you said it. What are some of the corrections? So I know when we used the app, Yvonne was like, oh no, I serve way harder than this. <laughs> like Yvonne <laughs> swears he serves a hundred and something miles per hour. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, you're like, this is funny. This is poking at like the ego, you know? Yes. I'm like, right. I'm like, I don't know if the technology, like, You've never ever served with this mile per hour thing, yeah. But you think you serve right? Everybody has. I'm yeah. like, where's the yeah. reference coming? You're, from? you're imagining the screen at Wimbledon popping out yeah, at 140 yeah. miles an hour. Yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but was that like? Are those things that are hard to figure out with the technology? That's or that's pretty been hard. super straightforward. So speed is actually the hardest metric for us to do, okay. and it's probably the least accurate to Yvonne's credit Don't uh, tell that. <laughs> because <laughs> we're using a single camera. So when you have like that single vantage point, it's just, it's hard. Depth perception is just hard in general. And then speed is even harder because it's like the change of depth over time. So that's really hard. So that's really challenging for us. I think it's something we can solve eventually, but it's been hard to get that accurate. We focus more on like where the ball is landing um, because that gives you like line calling and things like that, which we felt like it was a bigger problem. But I mean, everybody loves seeing their speeds on Swing Vision. Yeah. Everybody wants accurate speeds. So I know that's a, that's a big improvement. You should just bump area. it up. You should just add, add 10. Yeah. yeah, we probably could you know just I mean? do that. Just do that and then <laughs> make everyone feel good. <laughs> it would help the social aspect. They would aspect share it too. <laughs> I would share the shit out of yeah. it. Yeah. I paid extra for more miles per hour. <laughs> oh, okay. it's, a, it's a bonus it's a feature. feature. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> well, I'm thinking on Strava, one of the, the most competitive aspects 
that makes the app is is like koms yeah. where you can compete with everyone yeah, and you can see so like with this mile per hour or whatever it might yeah, be yeah, yeah, yeah. you could set up a leaderboard uh, that they could yes. serve in la yeah exactly like, yeah and you could do local you could do regional like whatever you could it do might it by be. club that'd be cool yeah or at least latc exactly so like yes. you know you you're, you're the people that you're playing with all the time so That's now hilarious. yvonne's yeah. like hey on the app i'm number one and then, then everyone else is, is coming up and trying to, <laughs> to compete with him. Yes, that is very high priority on the roadmap for us, leaderboards. And as you said, it's nice. going to start with clubs. Yeah. So we're going to have like club-specific leaderboards. Let me and know. Let me it'll know. be cool. You're going to have to have like at least five or something people at your club playing to actually unlock the leaderboards. Oh, great. To encourage you. But LATC has enough people, I'm sure. Yeah. We want to work with brands as well to like offer prizes. You know, maybe Wilson's giving away a racket or whatever. So And Strava's done that really well, too. They've done a great job. Oh, with smart. Like if, yeah, um, if you're like top dog at LATC, TC, you get like a hat. Yeah, exactly. Which is easy for the pro shop to do. Yeah. Zach would be like done or a yeah, water yeah. bottle or something. Exactly. Yeah. Even a discount. I a mean, yellow jersey. Yeah. For, you know, I mean, the, like I, I did a contest on Strava where it was like I climbed the amount of, of how tall Everest is over a month. And as such, I got a discount on a jersey from a company that did like this specialized Strava Everesting challenge jersey. And so like it's all the incentives, but it helps everyone along. Is pickleball on the roadmap? Or is that already yes. possible? That is on the roadmap as well. And a lot of people have been using it for pickleball and it already kind of works, which is kind of funny. Oh, nice. Um, because it's yeah. really just a smaller it's... court at the end of the day. Right. Um, a lot of the shots look pretty similar. Okay. So it works decently well, but that's going to be our next sport. Um, will be pickleball next year. So we'll Smart. have it in beta in Q1, actually. And is there anything, so like with Strava and some of these other apps, like Map My Ride, yeah. one of the interesting things was they were able to sell their data to cities to tell the cities where people would bike, yeah. right? And it's just interesting, like, oh, I would have never thought of that revenue stream. Yeah. Are there is there interesting plays with your data? It's like this IBM calling being like, <laughs> oh, we could create, yeah, yeah. I don't know, right? Or like, um, like, this is interesting. So the Australian Open created an NFT. Right, I remember right? that, yeah. And so in doing that, it was like spots on the court and every yes. spot was a ball and if yeah. the ball landed on that spot or was a winner, you yeah. you as the NFT holder of that particular spot got something, some yes. sort of utility. Yes. But there's a date. There's a lot of data, right? Everything's like becoming sure. sort of data centric. Is there interesting avenues? Well, it's that funny you mentioned that example because I actually have a meeting with Tennis Australia next week okay. about doing the same thing with Swing Vision at a smaller event. So yeah. they're not going to be able to afford Hawkeye for the shot positions. Okay. So they want to use Swing Vision to create those like ball points and then create NFTs out of it. So we might actually get into that space. Keep me but, posted. But I so bought one of those just because I was so intrigued. Oh, you did? Oh, that's yeah. funny. Because I was like. It was interesting. It yeah, was more yeah, of like, yeah. I'm just paying for user right, research right, right, and right, I want right. to see where this is going to go. Yeah. And I, it was cool. It was really interesting. <laughs> yeah. I still have it. But they do offer a lot of uh, benefits to every single other. Right. Like, major, you get some like extra Wimbledon or all this. Access. Like the open. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's interesting concept. I mean, I think that could be a cool way to go. In terms of like governments and stuff, I feel like the most thing we, helpful thing we could do there. And this, I mean, this is a long-term thing, but as you have more and more people using the app in like public courts and mm -hmm. private courts, mm -hmm. you can just understand like usage mm -hmm. of courts, right? Facilities. Yeah. yeah. I think that would be really helpful for like local governments to understand like where we should be investing more money in tennis. Where do we need to like go out and, you know, like upgrade the infrastructure or something like that. So I feel like that could be kind of interesting. On the other side of it, is there a play for you where you, you can think about like acquiring like these like tennis scheduling apps, like play by point <laughs> or something that are really yeah. doing right. They, and then that way you're sort of, it's all all in one. You know what I mean? Cause the technology I, I there do seems think fairly that, light. that would be pretty cool because one, one other problem we've wanted to solve, which is another like kind of, I don't think anyone's done a good job with this. It's just like finding someone to play with at your level. Like that is so hard to do. Everybody rates themselves, makes up numbers, like inflates numbers, whatever. Some people decrease the numbers because they just want they to win more. Win. Yeah. Like it's just weird. People it's do weird, weird stuff. It's so weird. And I think we have the best data. Like literally I can tell you how fast you're hitting. Like how more granular can you get than that, right? So like I feel like we could match people better than anybody in the world. And I think the the key to making that experience really nice would be having a booking platform yeah. because then it's like, okay, then tomorrow, you know. 6 PM, book the court for me, find someone for me, just deal with it. It's like yeah. Uber, right? It's just right. like tomorrow, 6 PM done. And then like book it. It'd also be good if it could like instantly like integrate with UTR. And so that way you're yeah. also, you're, you're actually getting better. And yeah, it's yeah. Actually you can actually make sure tracked. your ratings actually going What's up. What's UTR? Yeah. So UTR is basically like a, a, so there's USD and UTR and they're just rating systems, but UTR is out of 16. And okay. so like a Nadal is like a 15.8 something. Whereas like, uh, let's call it like a really good junior tennis player could be between a seven and a 10. Sure. And like most D1 students are like a 10 UTR, okay. but you can start as low as like a three or two, right? So, so it's this, but it's this thing where it's like, 
it's almost like a handicap in golf. It's you, okay. the more you play against players. So if you beat a five, let's say you're a six UTR, you beat a five. Cool. It'll go up to like six point, well, maybe 6.06 .06 or something. But if the five beats you, then the five jumps up a lot more and then yours would decrease. That makes sense. Yeah. And so it's basically just a, but it keeps everyone honest yep. mm -hmm. because the USTA is basically one, two, three, four, five, mm -hmm. and that's kind of it. Whereas UTR is like to the decimal and it's out of 16. Okay. And so you, if, if someone told me a UTR, I'd know exactly. More, much more precise. Way more precise. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot better. But it's also this thing of like people don't like uploading because if you get embarrassed in a match, everyone's <laughs> like, oh, my UTR, my UTR, yeah. my UTR. Everyone's like worried about their, you know, their UTR. Yeah. It's been interesting to see that, especially in the juniors. Like they like UTR because it's so granular, but then it's like there's a lot more pressure totally. for every match all of a sudden. Right. Yeah. So it's interesting. But yeah, I think like that's in the right spirit. Like I think we need more, more rating systems like that. Yeah. And then as you said, like, I just want to be able to like play and then see that reflect in my rating yeah. eventually. And, and, and then when it comes to like marketing and just like social media strategy, how do you, yeah. you know, how do you view that as an app? Obviously Apple's helped tremendously yeah. when Andy talks about it on camera, that's also helping sure. tremendously running ads against that. It's probably smart, yep. but how do you view yep. just the stickiness, I guess, of the power of social and just <laughs> amplifying yeah, it's been interesting. I mean, so we've had the most traction probably on Instagram and YouTube. So you have an Instagram page where we'll just post highlights from, from our app. So we'll just pick a random person that played a really compelling rally and then just like clip that, post it. And that's gotten very interesting because now we get more and more people saying like, oh, they'll actually send us a rally. So like, hey, can we get featured? Like I hit this tweener last week. Like, can you guys feature that? So so we got that happen, which is cool. So I think that's going to start to happen more. I think it's just about demographics. So like Instagram's probably younger. YouTube's going to be kind of the older demographic. So we have a lot of people who post on YouTube. For them, I think it's more about instruction. A lot of, I'd say kind of like adults use YouTube to just like learn how to improve their game whether it's like learning how to hit a kick serve or like whatever it is. And so there's a big community of tennis players on there. And so we've been trying to put more content on there that's more instructional related. And we're going to be doing a lot more with that uh, next year. Or even partnering with like Patrick uh, Monoglu or whatever his name is. Yeah, his exactly. Or maybe Brad Gilbert, you know? So yeah, yeah, exactly. I feel like or there could be like, something cool there. Like a swing vision video and yeah. they go like, oh, Diego, you're not turning your body. Or exactly. Like, like I, I would think it would be so cool to get a celebrity to just like review matches on swing. Brad vision. would do that. Like, that'd be yeah. sick. Brad would totally do that. Yeah. Like, so. Because you have the data and, then and he you loves have talking shit, it. by the way. He <laughs> loves. <laughs> He's the best commentator. He's so good. He's so good. Even when he was here, I was like, are you from Boston, dude? Like, you are, you are <laughs> mad about something. <laughs> He's just, like, angry and with it and funny. I relate well to that type of energy, so it works yeah. for me. Yeah. But not everybody does, you know? Yeah, yeah. We'll, have to, we'll have to make sure it works with our brand, but I'm sure, I'm sure we'll make it happen. <laughs> yeah. when, when you look to the future and, and you're thinking, like, big picture, I yeah. know that you mentioned that you were looking at incorporate. You've already started incorporating pickleball into this, yeah. but, like, this technology, in my mind, could it be used for other sports such as, like, cricket, baseball? Yes. golf like are you thinking about down the line incorporating and bringing more sports under the swing vision umbrella for sure i mean i think that's like the dream for us is to be like the next strava essentially right yeah. and doing this for like ball and racket sports which no one has done basically so i think there's a big lane there i think we're, we're the farthest ahead in that lane so i think now it's just a matter of like with the resources we have what should we tackle in terms of like biggest market and also just tech technologically like what's the easiest to go to so for us right now because we've solved this problem in tennis like racket sports are just really easy for us to go into initially just because like we know that problem so well and just fundamentally it's easier because you have fewer players to track you have this kind of like fixed court size you can see everything with one camera which i think is just really nice for like scalability so you know a sport like golf which is just one player technically that you need to track but you're kind of moving around the course. It's like a little bit trickier. You have to set it up every time. Set it up every yeah. time. It's great for like the driving range, right? But I right. think like if you're playing an actual game, it's maybe a little bit more friction. Yeah. So we're trying to find sports where we can kind of be, you can use a product both for practice and actual gameplay. So like racquetball or squash would be. Yeah, those pretty, might be a little bit higher priority. Yeah. Um, although those are like sm slightly smaller in terms of player base. Yeah. But like but like table tennis, for example, right? Huge in Asia, right? Massive sport. Also big here. And then badminton, massive sport. Um, so, you know, sports like that, I think, are very compelling because it's like we can solve it easily. Yeah. Massive market, a lot of players. But I think baseball is a really cool one because you do have a lot of players, but most of the actions around kind of home plate. Um, so I feel like you could do something there. Volleyball is another interesting one as well because not that many players. 
and you can see everything with one camera if you just put it kind of behind or something. So I think there's like some other sports that we're thinking about, but initial focus, I mean, we're still pretty small, so yeah. it's still, uh, you it's still racket sports. You have to focus on tennis first. Yeah, like I don't yeah. want to, you know, dilute our resources yet. Stick to um, tennis, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I would so love to just here. stick to tennis. Yeah. so much here. Plant your flag. We spoke to Thera, the Therabody, Theragun uh-huh. founder, and when we spoke to him, they were just starting to sponsor athletes. Like they mm. were brand, and they had just sponsored yeah. Colin Morikawa, the golfer. And then he, just, he like won the U S open yeah. like immediately after, That's the sponsorship, so cool. which is insane that he did that. Hmm. Like the timing of the sponsorship, right. perfect for the brand essentially. Wow. But w- do so you cool. ever think about that? Yeah, for it's sure. Like these juniors coming up. Oh my God. Yes. That's like our goal. I mean, that'd be so cool. Like the next U S open champion is, was like powered by swing vision. That'd be amazing. Yeah. That's the goal. Eventually. I think it's a, it's like a high budget thing to do, but I think we're going to get there, you know, maybe, maybe after a couple more funding rounds, but we have started seeding the app to a few pros. So some pros have started using it and their coaches are using it with them. So that's been really cool to see that uh, they're, they're finding value. I think we have to just figure out like the sponsorship angle so they can actively promote it. You could even, so this is interesting too. So it's almost like it's a different kind of sponsorship where just like Twitch, right? So if I have a gamer on Twitch, mm-hmm. I'm a gamer that makes money. If I'm a, if I'm right. a YouTube creator, the right. creator makes money. Yeah, In yeah. this setting, it could be like your pro that that's Swing a good Vision point. sponsors can literally make money. I could see that actually. That would be cool because it could be like learn from the pro. Yeah. Like, right, I'm in my app. I'm messing up my forehand yeah and then it's like watch this quick video on yeah. this guy this pro and then that but it's all cool. in the app and then that and then he can get revenue i could see well it's i mean if we're really going to the twitch model like i feel like if i'm Serena, for example right like i'm just doing a practice match with venus or something ahead of the us open yeah like i can stream that match i can provide commentary and i'll get like millions of views obviously right, right? right. and then you just make a bunch of money for that's that, hard so. for you isn't it like that would keep me up at night the problem <laughs> of like do i just do this or do i go <laughs> twitch model yeah, it's it's interesting. I have mean, you spoken I've, to Justin Khan? Have you spoken to him? No, I haven't. You haven't met him. <laughs> I haven't met him. That would be interesting, though. Yeah. But I mean, I think if it's if it's a model that like any consumer can do, but it's just they're able to take the most advantage of it. I think that makes that makes sense to me, right? So there's there's probably a way there to to make it work because that's like uncaptured media. Like all For these pros sure. are practicing hours a day. Like everybody would love to see like Serena or like Feders. That's how everyone loves Indian like, Wells. You can yeah, see them exactly they're right like, there. There's no reason why they can't just stream this from Swing Vision and make it like a Twitch experience. And I think that'd be great. It's you like could, you don't you know where this would go, but you can feel like this would actually right. be very compelling. And it would right? change the so, game. You could do that in any sport. Yeah, you could do it in any sport. You could do it with LeBron. I think there's something there. I think uh, it just there's there's some things that kind of need to click in terms of like 5G connectivity and like oh, upload sure. speeds and all that. For so it's sure. like a little yeah. early, yeah. but it's almost there. It's like you around the corner. You would definitely see. break it. But yeah, yeah you'd, you'd break it. Yeah. But that's um, exciting. But it's around the corner. It's 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 coming. Like uh, it's not far. All right, brother. Thanks for coming <laughs> yeah, on the podcast. Really appreciate man. the time. Yeah, thank P- you. Tell for people me. where they can download the app and do all the good stuff. Yeah, it's just the on app the app store. store. Simple. Um, su- super simple. Swing Vision should be the Tim first result. Tim Cook's results. favorite app. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, he's on the tennis court. That's definitely what he's using. So, <laughs> thanks, brother. Thanks, for, yeah. thank you, thank you, brother. <laughs> hey, you. Yeah, you listening? Thank you so much for making it to the end of the episode. Make sure to follow us on Instagram, subscribe on YouTube, and we cannot wait to see you next week for another great episode. Cheers.